Okay, we got an hour, and we're gonna, I'm just going to go high on content. I want you to take notes and notes and notes, and the reason why is that I think that today is the day. I, I, can, I can say that for someone, it's going to be the day they're going to drop their bullshit story. They're going to let go of old beliefs, and they're going to rock up to work tomorrow with a new set of eyes. I do believe that that's going to happen to someone. I also believe that to some people, what they're going to do is they're going to say, it was another great session. I love that powerhouse. I'll tell you what, that lunch there was outstanding. Jason and Peter put on a great show, but I'd like to tell you that the agent that takes the most notes, that goes off and executes the most, is going to win. First takeaway point, if I only have 30 seconds to talk today, this is what I'd say. The agent that generates the most of amount of appointment wins. Full stop, bullshit. Shit. We can go home. You know it. I know it. At the end of the day, if you want something, you get it. If you don't, you get an excuse. That's pretty much how it all works in real estate. We can keep going to courses and courses and courses and hear about what to do, or hear about how to do it. But at the end of the day, you know it very well. It's all about this other thing called want. Because when you want something badly, you make your paycheck passion. The great ones that I know do it not because they have to, but do it because they want to. And that, to me, is the real question you've got to ask yourself on a daily basis. How much are you all in, in real estate? Or do you have the get-out clause on your contract, which has got option B in it? Or are you the kind of agent that has said, you know what, I've got to face reality. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a barrister, I don't have 20 million in inheritance, I'm hungry, I want money, I want a good life, that's it, I'm all in, I'm burning everything, I'm, I'm burning the boats, there's no back, heading back home, I'm going full steam. And I've got to tell you, that is the attitude that the people that I interview that write a million dollars in gross commission, that get my, that, that get, who gets my videos each week? Can I get a show of hands? I've got to tell you, these people that I interview, you know, some of them are guys, some of them are girls, some of them are older, some of them are younger, but some of them are like super nice people, but they've got one common thing, and that is that they have got an addiction to success. They are addicted to it. And real estate success, it's really weird. The more success you get, the more you want. It's addictive. And they want it badly. And I'm going to say to you, we can sit down and we can talk about every little database, you know. Like I had a guy just about two hours before coming on here. I had a guy contacted me through Facebook, said, I want to chat. I'm, I'm just unsure about my strategy. And here's a conversation on the phone today. He said, Tom, you know, you talk about in your nine-week program doing, you know, the 6 six twelve. You know, six houses either side of a signboard and the 12 opposite. And I've got another guy in my office here that tells me that we should be doing 336. And there was a newsletter. There was a newsletter that went out there. I think he said from best practice that said do 10, 10, 20, right? So, Tom, you're out there. You're talking to all the great agents out there. You're interviewing them. What is, in fact, the right strategy? I said, okay, listen, I've got about a couple of minutes. We'll have a quick chat. Um, just quickly, what are you currently doing at the moment? He says, at the moment, I'm just designing my plan and working on it. And I want to, you know, work out the exact correct dialogue I'm going to use. And I just, you know, I'm really confused. I don't know. What do you reckon? Should I do 10, 10, 20, 3, 3, 6? What do you reckon? I said, listen. I said, what you should do today is 1, 1, 2. Do something. <laughs> right. Do something. Just talk to people. Right? Talk to people. Don't complicate it. Some people you're going to talk to, they're going to want to talk more than others. Some people that don't want to talk to, you're going to move on. It's not like you're going to have some tricky line for this person that absolutely hates you. You just talk to people. You know. Come on. You guys know. You're smart enough. You can tell when someone wants to have a conversation or someone not sure. You get better at the way you talk to people as time goes by. But at the end of the day, when you're doing real estate sales, you are going through the numbers. You're not curing cancer in many ways. For the first two years, you're glorified telemarketing people. Pays good. Pays better than curing cancer. Pays good. So... 
slide number one, attraction agent 3.0, write this down, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. Get that into your head. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. Right now, can I tell you, if you're an attraction agent, if you're an agent, Deborah, isn't it here? If you're Deborah, who writes like over a mil, over a million bucks in GCI, known in her area, brand, she's got people out there that are seeing her profile. Can I tell you, there's one neighbour talking to another neighbour over the back of a fence. That's where listings are won and lost. It's not what you say to the market, it's what the market says to each other about you. That's the new world. Brand is what people say about you when you're not there. That's where listings are won and lost. In the new world, it's no longer return of investment and what a company goes off and does in a big marketing campaign. It's in fact return of engagement. What are the consumers saying about you? And this information now is shared dramatically. Of course, social media allows things like you know, like we look at things like TripAdvisor, for instance. So I can go off and I've gone through the process because I'm going to Bali on the 27th of September. I went on there, I saw an ad that's got my interest going. So I went on and I was about to book a holiday and then I went on a TripAdvisor and the last five or seven people that have gone to this resort were slagging it off, saying how shit it was, service was bad, don't go back there. I was just about to do the transaction. What do I do? I stay on TripAdvisor and I look at what people are raving about at the moment. Next thing you know is there's like about 20 reviews or 30 or 40, I can't remember. Everyone's raving about Club Med saying perfect family holiday. Everything's there, food's great. So what do I do? I book Club Med. You know what actually happens? I listen more to another consumer than I listen to the company promoting itself. That's the new world. So start getting raving fans. Here's a tip, you don't have TripAdvisor, but you've got a Facebook account, and I can tell you when Lois sells a house, what Lois should do is go to the vendor and say, are you happy? Yes, I'm happy. Okay, I'm going to ask a small favour. Do you mind putting on Facebook what you thought of the experience, what you thought of me? And when you do that, do you mind tagging me? I'd appreciate that. What happens next is this. Lois tells all her friends that you're great. Could be 500, could be 1,000 people. Lois tags me. She tells all my friends the same thing. There's a takeaway execution point you can start doing next offer and acceptance. So... Where do I get all my content and information? Just cheating, just cheating, getting people come and talk to me. We have a good conversation. We interview each other for around, you know, 30 minutes. I may as well show you that's my little camera I use, $299. Thank you so much. That $299 today has got me. That's a snapshot from about five weeks ago, my blog. I've got 16,600 subscribers. That little camera, that little camera there. By all I do is just interview people. I talk to them for around 45 minutes. I edit it, make it 20 minutes, and I send it out there. See, I believe that sales has changed. Sales 3.0 is this. You don't sell. You educate. There's a movie, Glen Gary, Glen Ross, and Alec Baldwin in it says, ABC always be closing. I've got to tell you, 2014, that's bullshit. What you do now is... A-B-E, always be educating, educating. The agent that provides the most amount of education to their core area and is a specialist and is a trusted advisor becomes their agent before they need an agent. So when a vendor needs an agent, they have got an agent. That is the simple strategy in real estate. And I want to share with you what I think that you need to get really good at. And that is the concept of jab, jab, hook. And I'm not saying start smashing the vendors. <laughs> what I'm saying is that what you do is you give, 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 give. What do I do? Every week, send out videos free. What do I do? Give, give, give. You know why? Because I want to build trust with my audience. Here's what I know. People will listen to people they like 
but they will buy off people they trust. And trust takes time. And the best trust enabler is frequency. So I do it week in, week out. Week in, week out. By the way, if you want a really great email send out program, MailChimp. The best. Love it. Obsessed with it. The emails go out, I've got an amazing open rate. Like I was showing, so, who, 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 who was the guy yesterday that looked at my open rate? He said, that's awesome. And they said they were coming here today. Where is he? Over there. What's your first name again? Andrea. So, Andrea, I've got an average open rate of around, what did it say, 40 46% an average open rate. Why is that? Because I'm giving stuff to people, I'm not asking anything back and they just say, this guy's just giving, giving, giving. But don't get me wrong, once I've earned people's attention, I occasionally, like I'll have a, a nine-week coaching program at the moment, I offer various things at different times. But what happens is you've earned the right for those consumers. Here's the issue. If you build a database of around 15, 20,000 people, you have built a TV channel and you control the audience. So just feed the database. If you're new in real estate, year one, hands up. Okay, all you do, just feed the database. Just feed the database. Keep putting it in. Remember, when you're prospecting, you are not prospecting to get a listing. You are prospecting to get contacts that one day will become a listing. Because what you will be doing is jab, 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 jabbing away. When they're ready to put their house on the market, you have been their agent before they need an agent, so they've got their agent. That is the secret to real estate. Here's the problem. No one wants to jab. Because it doesn't pay any money. Now, that's the problem. Everyone wants to wake up, go out, speak to someone, find the ideal person out of 20,000 homes. Somehow, I've knocked on the door and this person wants to sell their house next month. Well, nah. You have conversations to build contacts. You nurture those. And then one day, when they're ready to make a move, you're getting the business because you're the trusted advisor in that marketplace. Be their agent before they need an agent, so when they need an agent, they've got an agent. Basically, why I've put apples there, I want you to have the metaphor. You go up there, you pull the apples off the tree before they fall on the ground, because if they fall on the ground, everyone's running and fighting for them. And when everyone's running and fighting for them, what actually happens is agents drop their pants to get the business. Yep? Okay. And this is what happens. Can I explain to you how commissions work, right? If you're in a marketplace where you've got three average agents, this is how it works. Agent one goes out, agent two goes out, and agent three goes out. That's what, do generally, how many people get called out to a listing presentation by vendors? Three? Three? Yeah? You occasionally get someone that has decided that they're going to do a PhD project on agent selection. <laughs> and they will create a spreadsheet and on the spreadsheet they will have the agent's name, their fee, uh, what time they got to the appointment, punctuality, dress code, blah, blah, blah. But what I'd like to say is that generally three go out there, agent one goes in and they say they were pretty shit, agent two goes in, they were pretty shit, agent three goes in, they were pretty shit. So the vendor says, okay, we got to pick, um, they were all pretty shit, who's the cheapest of the shittest? <laughs> they need a selection process. So one of the things I'd like to tell you is don't play that game. Don't play the price commission game, which is what most agents do. Play the value game. Agents get paid a commission by a vendor, but it is value that they give them back. Flip the game and basically say, talk process, not price. I want to explain to you the attraction business model. Yes, I know that some of you are saying, Tom's biased. He works for News Corp. Of course, he's going to talk print. He's got Cara Bowman that runs Queensland Papers there with us. And, you know, they're here today and they're going to brainwash us to take full page ads. We'll settle for half page. <laughs> but what I'd like to tell you is this, that um, here's the model of attraction business. Having good print media, having social media, having upgraded internet listings, and don't get me wrong, look, I know everyone is saying realestate.com, it's expensive, all that sort of stuff. All I've got to say is this, 
Um, page one, page two of the search results is where you want to be because if you're not, you're falling into the trap of what Google says. And that is, if you're not on page one or page two of search results, you're building a billboard in the forest. No one's going to notice you, right? The last one is immerse yourself in community sponsorship. So here's a deal. $3,000 not vendor paid advertising, agent paid advertising, find an organisation that you love. Sponsor it. Don't give them the check. Go there, give them the check, and then go there to the training sessions. Go there to some of the games. Go there to the awards nights. Become their agent before they need an agent. Own the soccer club. Now, if we have 10 transactions that come on the market out of that relationship at an average of 10 grand fee, there's $100,000 in commission because you get known as their agent. People talk about you when you're not there. That is a good return of investment. So they're the four things that I want you to look at about the attraction business model. And the reason I really push attraction business is that get real, guys. When you first start off in real estate is this. So when you start off in real estate, I want you to know that what you do is you've actually got what I call the chase push model. The chase push model is that you are out and all you're doing is doing a lot of phone work. You are out there and you are interrupting strangers pretty much, right? You are interrupting strangers. Some of these strangers are not nice to you. May I say to you that you must get used to having people that are not nice to you. Remember, rejection, it's not about you, it's about them. Understand that concept. So that'll help you through the first two, three years because I think you do need to move from the chase push model and after about two to three years when you've built a lot of contacts and you've grown the database, you've picked up some business, then you start moving to the next model. And this is the model that people that write 500 grand in gross commission income and over move to, and that is the attraction business model. And the attraction business model is this. The attraction business model is that I know that Deborah is the person that is the dominant agent in that marketplace. So what happens is I call Deborah to my house because I made the decision, and here's the research, 60% of the decision is made before the listing presentation. 60%! People make up their minds before you're out there on who they're going. Why? Because it's not 20 years ago. It's now, they've got all the information. They go onto Google, they go onto Facebook, they go onto realestate.com. They're seeing things, there's transparency, they're seeing results in the papers on the weekend. Everyone knows the information. So what actually happens is they call Deborah because what they want to do is validate their decision. But guess what? They call another two agents out as well just to keep Deborah honest. They check. But you know what actually happens? These are the two agents. <laughs> They're starting from 20 metres behind the race. She's got the track record. So what actually happens is she doesn't have to be brilliant. She's just got to make sure her audio matches her video and she's in the best spot. Now, here's the reason why I want you to move to attraction. When you're attraction, you get higher fees. You get better VPA. You get listings that are better listings, and the reason why is this. People listen to specialists, but they distrust needy, desperate salespeople. That's why you've got to move to the attraction business model. You see, I know when I want to list in New Farm, Matt Lancashire is a man that has got profile in this area. I know when Matt comes out, Matt's not going to be super, super cheap. I know I've got to pay a price for it. It's the same way that when I order a soy latte at the Hilton Hotel, I know I'm going to be paying seven bucks or six bucks. And I also know at the Formula One Motel, I'm not going to be paying seven bucks. That is the law of attraction. And may I say to you, here's the great news. 
I don't know where you are in your real estate life right now, but what I can tell you is when you move to attraction model, it's so much easier. Because when you've got listings with marketing, you get more listings with marketing because people are attracted to it. It's a better. Can I say to you, it's easier to write 700,000 than what it is to write 200,000. Because at 700,000, you've got people that are coming to your open for inspections. At 700,000, you've got some easy dialogue that you call people on a Monday and say, thanks, you came through 27 Smith Street. By the way, are you researching, buying or selling at the moment? That's the prospecting. You're prospecting of people that are coming to you. And when people come to you, you actually don't have to be desperate and needy. And I've got to say that this whole model is underpinned under one thing, and that is you've got to get good at getting vendor paid advertising. Because when you get good at getting vendor paid advertising, not only are you helping a seller to sell their house for more money in less time, but you are also putting you on the shopping list for all the other business that comes in the marketplace. So that's what it is. Now, I spend my whole life, because I get paid by News Corp, studying what is it that good people that are, get VPA are good at. And what I've noticed is this, that good people in VPA have got self-belief. They believe in that. See, I think that you can actually not know what to say, but if you believe in something, people feel what you feel. So having a belief is so critical. And in fact, if you don't have a belief, I suggest that you don't sell VPA because you're bullshitting then. Because if you're saying, I wouldn't market my property, then why would you go off and recommend that to an owner? Right? So you need to have belief. The second thing is, I've got to tell you, I think you need to have scripts and dialogues. And I know that most people are going to say, I'm not the robotic type, I'm more authentic. I tell you, here's the deal. When you have internalised the scripts and dialogues, when you know them inside out, when you say them in your own words, when you have the right intention, they're no longer scripts or dialogue. They're you giving advice to a friend to help them make a decision. Don't use a thousand words when 50 will do. That's what scripts and dialogues are. You know what scripts and dialogues are? Scripts and dialogues are saying something that another person takes seven minutes to say that goes around in circles and still doesn't answer the question for the vendor, whereas someone else goes in, answers it, short, sharp. Vendor says, I get it. Clear, concise, not wishy-washy. So I'd like to tell you that, in fact, one of the biggest challenges that you've got is that this thing about disintermediation is only a problem for agents that rock up and use fee and cheap marketing as their strategy. I'd like to say to you that your role in real estate is not to sell houses. Your role in real estate is a concept called house price maximisation because you know that this market is very good. You know that this market, you could have a receptionist, you could have, you could have someone with no experience rock up to an open house if the property is priced right, properties will sell. Hands up if you agree with that concept. Okay, so the goal is not to actually sell a property. The goal is, in fact, and can I say to you that vendors have got good product knowledge. They've been living in the damn house for seven years. They know where the kitchen is, right? In fact, what I'd like to tell you is the role of the real estate agent is to get what I call the hidden 10% premium in the marketplace. That is what agents are hired for. Agents are not hired to sell a house. Agents are hired to actually add value to the transaction. So one of the things I want you to do is to start rocking up as a specialist and not start rocking up as a salesperson. A specialist has got this incredible ability. A specialist can go to a listing presentation, actually define a problem that the vendor didn't even know existed and come up with a solution within 30 seconds. That is what a specialist is. That is when you get paid money. Because most vendors are sitting there saying, I'm going to get three agents to come in and I'm going to pick the one that's the cheapest and just see how they go. And the one that gives me the best price for my house. But then you come along and what you do is you disrupt that process because you say to them, I want to explain to you my role is not in fact to sell your house. You can sell it. You can save the commission. You don't have to pay any agent. But what I'd like to talk to you about is this. This concept that if I get you an extra 10% for your property that in fact I might be 1% dearer but you're 9% better off out of the process.
That's what I want to talk to you about. And Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, here's the process. It's a three-step process. Number one, we must not just sell your house to a buyer. We must sell your house to the must-have buyer. The must-have buyer. The must-have buyer is the emotional buyer. The must-have buyer is the buyer that turns around and says, I must have that house. I don't care about the price. I must have that house. And what you do is to learn to use stories and metaphors when you explain things. And to me, one of the great metaphors that you can use is just pick up a book and say, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, let me explain to you the must-have buyer. Let's assume that this book here says... It is the year 12 final, final uh, practice paper and it is how to blitz your final exam and get into uni. That's the name of the book. And it's $30. And the exam's in one week's time. And your daughter comes to you and says, I want that book. It's going to help me pass my exam. Mum, Dad, let's go buy it. You say to yourself, let's go do it. $30. That's great. Let's go. So you walk into a bookstore, Dimmix. You ask the assistant, can we please buy this book with a big smile on your face? And the assistant says, I'm sorry. We sold the last copy. We had 50 yesterday. We've got none left. So you frown and say, that's okay. We'll go to the next bookstore. So you go to the next bookstore, Angus and Robertson, and you ask for the same thing, and the shop assistant says, I'm really sorry. This book came out yesterday, and we sold all copies. Every year 12 student has come in and taken it. We've got none left, and we're not getting any for another six weeks. All of a sudden, you become emotional because you want what you can't have. You leave that bookstore, you go to one final bookstore, it's in the middle of nowhere, you think, I'm, I'm not going to get it. There's no luck here. It's gone. It's too late. You walk in there, an assistant says, I don't think we've got it, but let's go to the shelf. You go to the shelf, there's one book there. Your daughter looks at it and says, that's it. You say to her, are you sure? She says, yes. You pick up the book and say, thank God. You go over to pay for it at the cashier, and the cashier says, that'll be $49.95. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hands up, do you buy the book? If you haven't put your hand up, naughty parent. <laughs> Feel bad. Well, let me tell you, you buy the book. You buy the book. And guess what? Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, that's the buyer we want for your property, the $49.95 buyer that turns around and says, I'm buying that home. So part number one in the process is that we must find the must-have buyer. Part number two in the process is this. We're back at the bookstore. Guess what? You know what actually happens? If there's two families in the bookstore at the one time and there's one book, the value of that book goes up. Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, competition. Competition breaks records at the Olympic Games. Competition is what breaks records at the racetrack. And competition is what gets record prices in Brisbane on Saturday. And what I'm saying is that we need to find a must-have buyer and then find two or three others that want it and then say, who's going to pay the most money for it? Takes us to part three in the house price maximization strategy. And that is this. Marketing. Marketing is basically fishing. It's basically going out there fishing to find the people that are going to buy this. So at this point, you turn around and say, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, I'd like to explain to you the marketing approach that we choose at our agency very much mirrors what John West Tuna does. They go out with a big net into the ocean, they pull out all the tuna, and then they reject 95% of them, and they pick the 5% that are the best, and that's what we do, and then we say, may the best person have the home, fight for it. That's how we get top dollar in real estate in 2014. And the vendor turns around and says, but Tom, we've got a beautiful home. Why would we advertise? We spoke to 
other agents and they say that they've got thousands of buyers. You've got a wonderful home, Mr and Mrs Vendor, but I'd like to remind you that your home is on the market in competition, not in isolation. And my job is very much to be a product manager today. I'm launching your house, which is a product against other product, which is other agents' houses, and our job is to outmarket the competition. And I'd like to show you how we're going to do it. But before I do that, I'm going to ask you a simple question. Do you want me to present you with a marketing plan that's just going to make you happy? Or do you want me to present you with a marketing plan that's going to get you the highest price? Which of the two do you want me to start off with? If you notice, I'm moving to a very much question-based type presentation. Mr and Mrs Vendor, let's have a look. This is how we go marketing for property. The first thing we do is we put it on the websites. We put it on realestate.com. It's a large website. It gets the most amount of traffic that we have, so we put it on there. We also put it on domain. We get traffic from them. We also put it on our own website, agent website. So when we put it on these three sites, we're going to get a lot of people that have been sitting in the marketplace that have been looking. These buyers are very important because there's lots of them, but there's only one issue. These buyers are also researchers, not necessarily buyers. They spend a lot of their time sitting on websites actually studying the marketplace. Some of them are researching, some are shopping, some are buying. But what we clearly know, that if we totally just rely on the internet buyer, what we're doing is we're relying on a buyer that's using old data. And because Brisbane is going up every week at the moment, you're going to have a buyer that sits on a website that's basically become a valuer in Brisbane. And what they're using is you're using historic data. And historic data means that they're going to make an offer that is lower on what your property's worth because they're very rational in their thinking. That's why we actually do some other stuff as well in marketing. And what we do, of course, is that we actually put your property in print. And the reason why we put it in print is that print doesn't get us as many buyers, but they get older buyers. And older people are the people with all the money in Australia at the moment. The self-managed super funds means that these people are very wealthy and usually they make higher offers. In addition to that, we must have a signboard up because the signboard also gets the emotive person that was not looking but lives in the area, says, I want to live near my family and they pay top dollar. We also put it on our own database because we've got 7,000 people just like the other agents. By the way, Mr and Mrs Vendor, uh, other agents don't have exclusive rights on buyers. Buyers look with everyone, but I'd like to tell you our database has got 7,000 buyers. We send it out to them. And also we get video. The reason why we get video is we know that when we use video, it has 400% more engagement on a website than no video. That's what the research shows. That's what REA shows. So Mr and Mrs Vendor, can I ask you, this is what 100% of the market to get all the buyers for your property what I can't tell you as I sit with you here today is where the best buyer is going to come from. I can't answer that. But where I can tell you is that where they're all going to come from. You may have, like, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in two minds. Sometimes if you can see that you've got a vendor that is reluctant about marketing, I would say, but before we actually get you to go off and invest too much, what we're going to do is use our hot 25, hot 48 hour period. We're going to get our hot 25 buyers in the first 48 hours to come through your property and see what offers we get. If we don't sell it to one of them at a good price, we will then move to plan B, which is a broader marketing campaign. If we sell it, plan A, it's not going to actually cost you too much, but if we don't, we're going to then move to plan B. The reason I like that approach is that when you've got other agents that are doing things for free, you're actually using free to beat free. And guess what? Once you've signed that up and you haven't sold it in 48 hours, you come back and you can sell a lot harder on the marketing because you don't have the biggest problem why people don't get VPA and that is fear of losing the listing. Number one reason. 
One of the agents I work with, Mark DiGiulio, wrote 1.3, 1.4 million in Melbourne uses a two-stage approach from Barry Plan. He's the number one agent. He's 30 years of age and he uses that approach. Go on my website and watch his interview. Mark DiGiulio. My site's tompanos.com.au. So what I'd like to tell you is that when you get really good at using some of the dialogue and language, and those of you that are doing my nine-week coaching program know that I'm obsessed about, you know, 30 or 40 pieces of dialogue. Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, your property is on the market in competition, not in isolation. Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, can I ask you, you spend $2,000 a year on car insurance protecting two cars worth $100,000. Why wouldn't you invest $4,000 protecting an asset of a house worth $700,000? Taking out marketing is like taking out insurance. Make making sure we don't undersell the biggest asset you own, the family home. Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, can I just ask you, what's more important to you, the $4,000 in marketing or the risk that you're going to undersell your property by $60,000? Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, do you think we're going to get a better price for your home if we go fishing into a pond with a fishing line or whether we go out into the ocean with a big net? And what I'd like to tell you is that you're not going to use 27 scripts on dialogues on one vendor. Like, I had a guy some time ago, during a break at a seminar, I said, we're going to do scripts and dialogues afterwards. He said, Tom, I'm the king of scripts and dialogues. He said, Tom, I'm the best. He goes, all I do is I spend, I go out to dinner with my fiance three times a week, and while we're waiting for the entree and the main course, all we do is practice scripts and dialogues. I said, you're kidding. He said, yeah. He said, Let's, you want to you do a bit of role play with me? Because he said, I'll show you. He goes, in fact, I'll tell you what, I'm so confident, I'll come up on stage after the break and we'll do some live role plays. I said, okay, let's do that. And he goes, don't you want to test me out? I said, no, no. And he goes, no, go on, test me out. I said, all right. I mean, really, I didn't want to test him out. I wanted to eat something, right? <laughs> I said, okay, um, I want to, I, I want to, I want to uh, list with you, but I don't want to spend any money marketing. He said, oh, the old marketing one, Tom. <laughs> he said, I knew you'd say that. I said, why is that? He goes, because you work in advertising. That's your favourite. He said, are you ready? I said, yep. <laughs> he said, here it goes. Tom, I can understand and appreciate that selling your house is the biggest decision you're ever going to make. In fact, 90% of your wealth is going to be in my hands. When you're selling your property, it's no different to actually getting your car service. When you get your car service, you have a fee for the labour and then a fee for the parts. In real estate, it's no different. You've got a fee for the commission and you've actually got advertising, which is the parts. He said, did you see what I did? I said, no, what happened? <laughs> He said, I used a comparison, I used a metaphor that you use the fee, the car is the mechanic does the work and then there's parts is the advertising. He said, I can do that with lots of various things, I can do that with a doctor and when you get the medicine, there's a fee for the doctor. I said, I get it, I get it. <laughs> he said, Tom, let's, you know, you, are you happy? I said, yeah, I'm happy. He goes, let's do one more. I said, shit. I said, no, it's all good. He goes, no, one more, test me out, I'm feeling good. I said, okay, um, I, don't, I, I want to think about it. I want to list with you. I think I'm going to list with you, but I just need time to think about it, and I'll call you tomorrow. He said, okay, but think it over, right. He said, Tom, I can understand and appreciate that selling your house is the biggest decision you're ever going to make. In fact, 90% of your wealth is going to be in my hands. Maybe I didn't adequately cover everything. Did we talk about the marketing? I said, yes, covered the marketing. Did we talk about the fee for service? Yes. Did we talk about the method of sale? Yes. Do you feel comfortable with me? I said, yes. He said, Tom, do you see what I'm trying to do? I said, no. He said, I'm trying to isolate the objection so I can answer it. He said, Tom, hit me with one more. I thought, shit, this guy's going to do my head in. He's killing me. And I was about to say to him, listen, I'm not listening with you because I don't like you. And I thought to myself, if I actually say that to him, he's going to say, Tom, if I can get you to like me in the next 30 seconds, would you... <laughs> He goes, Tom, what do you think of that? I said, not bad. Drink decaf. <laughs> Here's the point. They don't sound like scripts and dialogues when you know them. Know them inside out. Internalise them. Make them you. The commodity dungeon is not the place to be, guys and girls. Stay away. When you go into the commodity dungeon, you're saying we're the same. What I'm saying, say you're different. Be the disruptor or you'll be disrupted in the marketplace. Be the disruptor or you'll be disrupted. 
the perfect vendor listing presentation. Understand the concept that you are value-added provider. Get away from being a commodity and be a value-added provider. Show more, do more, give more. That's the way that you stand out in the marketplace. There's a great slide. It'll help you. It's what I call part three. We said belief. We said scripts and dialogues. Case studies. Have your properties written down. Have the address. Have the sale date. The method of sale. The advertised price. What marketing investment was used? Whether it was in print. Whether it was upgraded on the internet. Whether it had a video. Where the buyer first saw the property and the sale price. Have that sit there, sit there from a position of authority, be the trusted advisor, be the person that's got the data that supports what you say. And all you say is, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, they're the last six transactions that we've conducted at our office based on your property being 700000 What do you think the marketing investment should be? And it is an investment. It's an investment in the profits because every dollar extra you get for their family home is worth two times in the economy because it's tax-free. Understand that concept. Don't use a thousand words when 50 will do. Okay? People hate salespeople that are wishy-washy, that are all over the shop. They just like someone that knows their stuff, that answers their questions and moves on. We live in a world of speed. We live in the people that can get back to people first, the people that can say things in the fastest way that people can understand. They're the people that make connections. I want to tell you, hands up if you actually work in the Queensland market, because there, okay, the great stuff is this. I'm telling you, deregulation is fantastic news. Because in Sydney and Melbourne, I've got to tell you, the best real estate agents in the country are using accelerator schemes. And every so often you get a sale that goes off. Like we had, you know, we had two last Saturday, the Saturday before last. I want to just explain to you how it works. You sit there with a vendor and you say to the vendor, what's the number that's going to make you happy? They turn around and say, well, 1.2. You say, okay, so 1.2 make you happy. I'm just curious, if I got you an extra $100,000, would you give me 10? Sure, okay, well that means that you should go on our incentive scheme which will get us hunting to get you every, every cent in the marketplace. That means that you'll be 2% up to 1.2 and then 10% thereafter. Sign up, no problem. Property sells for 1,381,000. Let's do the math. 2% on 1.2 is 24 grand. Then 18,100 is the bonus. You get a fee of $42,100. Very easy to execute. I'll just repeat it. What's the number that's going to make you happy? 1.2. If we got you an extra 100,000, would you be happy to pay me 10? Sure. That puts you into our accelerator scheme. The fee will be 2% up to 1.2, then 10% thereafter. Not every transaction is going to go off. Not every transaction is going to go off, but you're going to get certain transactions, you know, that go off and they get 200, 300 more, 100 more. May I tell you that the best agents in Sydney and Melbourne use accelerators and you're going to have the opportunity when the legislation comes in to actually use it. Get good at it. Get good at it. You can actually increase your revenue per sale by this alone. Facebook, obsessed with it, not because I use it to tell people I'm having cornflakes and what my dog is doing. I use it because I want to actually get more subscribers. So what actually happens when I interview Matt Lancashire, what happens is that the day before the video goes out on Facebook, it says, watch how Matt Lancashire wrote a million bucks. They click on it. It goes to my website. Their name and email come to me. A black box comes up. I then get the video sent to them the day after. That's how you grow subscribers. Facebook's like an octopus. So I've got to tell you, um, I'm, you know, I'll use anything. I'll use print. I'll use digital. I'll use seminars. All I want to do is improve my reach because I want to be the go-to person for an agent before they need a person. So when they need a person, they've got a person. That's my strategy. And it should be your strategy. So a couple of rules on Facebook is get raving vendors to post testimonials and tag you. Remember that? I spoke about it at the start. The next one is engagement. Understand the concept 
that Facebook doesn't show every post you put up there. Mark Zuckerberg, who listed it on the stock exchange, wants to make money out of it. So what he says, you want more people to see it? You boost your post and pay money. But you know what he does? He favours people. He favours people that have got high share likes and comments. So make sure that you're posting stuff that's got high share comments or likes. Critical. I aim, my aim is every post I put up there, I want to hit 175 likes. When I sometimes put, you know, like, I'll, here's a couple of tips. Like tomorrow, if you've got auctions, just start the day and say, the person who guesses what 27 Smith Street, New Farm sells closest, wins this bottle of Maui. You'll have people that engage in that, right? And they'll check in. So start focusing on comments and likes. Run competitions. Share a piece of your daily. You know what? People know. Look, don't be surprised that when you rock up to a listing presentation, the vendors haven't gone on Facebook and sussed you out. Don't think it hasn't. I do that when I'm employing people now. People give me resumes. I just go to Facebook. The resume tells me what I want to hear. Facebook tells me the truth. Facebook tells me they've been shit-faced for two weeks. <laughs> Right? The resume tells me that they're pumped, that career's their number one thing, and they're into personal development and they exercise five times a week. <laughs> Two different things. Take the photos. Take the photos off. Everyone thinks it's really cool and smart to have photos of you trashed. May I say, do an audit, get rid of the photos. They are not the photos that you put in your marketing material telling people what a great agent you are, yet they're still open in public on Facebook. Next thing is, Facebook your vendors before you go to a listing presentation. Go on there. Have a look at them. 30 years ago, we'd have to ask questions for an hour to find out who they were. Today, we look at their Facebook page in 30 seconds. We know who they are. Look at their friends. You might be surprised. There could be people there you know. That's useful. You don't go there and say, I stalked your Facebook account. <laughs> Okay, as we come to, you know, we've got 12 minutes left and I want to tell you that my approach to sales is totally different. It's changed over the time. I believe that you need a question-based presentation and I believe, I believe that you've got to have the ability to go to a listing presentation and to be able to say, to be able to say this. And I'm not saying you literally say it, but you leave the vendor with this feeling. Jason, um... The first thing I want to let you know that I'm going to ask you a few questions about you, the property, and what you want to do. At the end of it, I may be able to help you. I may not. I'm not sure. If I can help you, I'll tell you what I'll do and how I'll do it. If I can't help you, I'll tell you, or maybe I'll recommend you to someone because you might want to be looking to talk to an agent about buying, what have you. But what I'd like to say is this. It's okay if I don't get your business. That's the exact approach that gets you their business. Because when a vendor knows that you care more about them than you meeting your listing target, they feel the abundance. They feel that you are not a desperate person that will say anything to get the business. Be the abundant, trusted advisor agent that's got the right intention, not the person that just wants to list them, sell them, crunch them, and move them on. I've got to tell you, in the new world, authenticity is what wins business. The minute that you drop your agent mask off, because don't forget, behind that vendor that we call a vendor is a human being that's got kids, that's got a chaotic life, that's nervous, that is stressed. What I'm saying is, take off that mask that you have as an agent and show up as a human. Because I've got to tell you, vendors call for an agent, but deep down they're looking for a good human being to show up in their life. You want to win share of wallet, you must win share of heart. What's your intention? What's a doctor do? They diagnose, then prescribe. What did I do here? I came in straight away and I asked a few questions. Where are you from? Have you seen me speak before? Who are in Queensland? 
And I've got to tell you, as I talk to you today, you may not realise it, but I'm changing my presentation as I'm going. I'm missing slides. What I'm doing is I'm feeling what needs to be said at this time. And I've got to tell you, the best real estate agents I know on the planet have got this incredible ability to be able to read the play. They hear what's said. They hear what's not been said. They hear what the vendor is really meaning when they're saying something. That is what I call mastery. Some people have got it. Some people get better at it. Hands up if you can understand what I've just said there. Hands up. Okay. Have a video pre-listing kit. I can't stress the importance of that. Spend the money. I did a video pre-listing kit as I came up here. Two and a half minutes. Spend the money because all you do is send it off to your vendor. Before I come out and see you, just watch a quick two-minute video. It'll tell you what we do, how we do it, and it'll answer a lot of questions. Everyone's got smartphones. Spend the money, get a good pre-list video. I actually think it's a step above the boxes and the brochures that people send out. People consume video more than they consume text. Go ugly early. Here's another tip. And what I mean by that is, guys, girls, there's going to be more stock on the market. You know, right now, prices have been strong because there's no stock on the market. And agents do anything to get the listing. That all changes. It changes. October, November, there's more stock on the market. When there's more stock on the market, guess what actually happens? Pressure off prices go down. Can I give you a big tip? You're in Grand Slam season. Your group certificate right now is highly impacted by September, October, November, December. It is Grand Slam. May I say to you, you must go ugly early. Tell people the truth up front. Start educating the vendor after you've signed the listing. Tell them what they need to hear, not what they'd like to hear. It's the biggest mistake agents make. They tell vendors what they need to hear, not what they'd like to hear. Get good at having crucial conversations. As I finish off here, I've got to tell you, those of you that have known me for a long time, you know, I'm, you know, excited. I woke up this morning and I'm going to, you know, go to the Courier Mail, speak to our team there, then come here today and have a chat. You know, I'm 47 years of age. In, um, at 37 in uh, 2006, I got diagnosed with a form of um, lymphatic cancer and unfortunately had spread and I spent a lot of time doing chemo and radiation and having various clinical trials and antibody drugs. And um, so a few years later on now, I've been in remission. And whilst, you know, it's not the sort of cancer that they say, five years, you're done and dusted, I still have and carry the story with me that I'm never going to get ill. That's the story. And we've all got stories in our life. And my doctor says I'd be unlucky not to have it. But I've got to tell you that what I learnt is this, that that was a gift. Because to me, some of the best gifts come badly wrapped. And that's what cancer looks like. That's the cancer in my groin there, the original one. And the reason I share this story with you is I reckon I learnt more at chemo than I learnt at ARIC or any personal development book. Because when you're, when you're told that things aren't looking good, you can actually start looking backwards in your life. And what I say is it's a very good exercise to reverse engineer your life. In your last hour, in your last day, what would you say? Has, you know, did I live a lie? Did I actually live someone else's life? Or do you think you'll say, I played big, I played 10 out of 10, I played my life, I brought my best version of me to life. And I'll never forget Day one at chemotherapy. Day one at chemotherapy. A stranger, a person who's never seen me again, came up to me as I sat there nervous, sweating. I knew things weren't going to be good. I'd been told the prognosis and he saw fear in my eyes. And he came up and he looked at me and he said, it's your first time? I said, yes. And he said, let me tell you, the future is going to be a lot better than the present. And you've got the power to make it so. I'll never forget that guy. Because every successful person I know has two beliefs. 
that the future can be better than the present and they have the power to make it so. May I say to you, never let your personal history get in the way of your destiny. May I say to you, do not live off memory, live from imagination. Do not live off probability, live off possibility. So today for me, life is much different. Because my life has turned, because that is when I got diagnosed. That's what had happened. You know why? Because when you are making money and things are good, which they were at the Wentworth Courier, and you're getting 200 pages a week at $4,000 a page, you become cocky, you become complacent, you become arrogant. Instead of being client-facing, you're sitting at a Porsche dealer looking to get a car. You're having four-course meals. You're drinking more. You're stopped doing the things that made you successful in the first place. And may I say to you, nothing breeds faith like success when you're most successful is when you're most vulnerable and I say you want to succeed fail faster the biggest mistake I made was worried about making a mistake the two beliefs remember those the future can be better and I have the power to make it so Here's how you're going to change for success. Create a major discontent between the current situation and the future. Every person I know that wins has a major discontent. They say, I'm no longer prepared to put up with my current situation. And that's what happened to me. I decided to rewrite my agreement with reality in one day. I made a decision. That's it. Start again. I ripped it up and start again. And may I say to you, you are a decision away from that. You are a decision. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm saying it's going to be worth it. Here's my morning ritual. Wake up 4.45. Have an attitude of gratitude. I'm grateful because I'm not in Syria. I'm grateful because I'm not at chemo. I'm grateful because I'm in the best country in the world. I'm grateful because I work in an industry where you can have a low IQ and still make a lot of money. How many jobs can you do that? How many jobs can you be 30 years of age, make $700,000 a year and can't do mathematics? It's a great job to be in. Check mobile, social media, journaling, write things down, self-development. I read a book. The hand that picks up a book is never the same hand that puts it back down. Remember that. Go and exercise. Hands up who exercises on a regular basis. That's a game changer alone. It gives you more energy, makes you sleep better, you feel good. I've got to tell you, you know, the best wardrobe you can have is confidence. And that's what exercise does for you. It's how you feel about you that other people feel about you. And may I tell you, don't worry about being liked by other people. Be liked by yourself. Don't worry about having the addiction about having to get everyone's approval. The best way to get someone's approval is to not need it in the first place. Be you, everyone else is taken. Understand that. Flip the game inside out. Flip it upside out. You can be the best copy of someone else or you can be the best you. There's always going to be someone smarter. There's always going to be someone better looking. Someone more money. Bigger car. Bigger boat. Smarter kids. But there'll never be a better you than you. You win that game. Those of you that are doing my coaching program know I'm obsessed with habit creation. I'm obsessed because I know this is the problem. You're going to leave here today and you're going to be pumped and excited and McGrath and Hazley and McLeod and Anne-Marie did some great talks. Did I say it right, Anne-Marie? Yes, beautiful. Did some great talks, but here's the deal. I'm telling you, one week later, trust me, I see it time and time again. You're back to baseline. And because this... You are pumped and it goes down every day after the seminar. May I say, you must move from an energy-driven life and move to a purpose-driven life. And I quickly want to move to this video and just have a quick look at this. Can we go to that? Thank you, guys. Hi, it's Tom Panos here. I've been working with seven-figure agents for the last 16 years. During that time, I've learned the ideas, strategies, techniques and behaviours that they're doing to write a seven-figure income. For the first time ever, I'm releasing the remarkable nine weeks to your best year ever in real estate. Tom not only knows his stuff, but he's actually walked the talk. He's done it himself. He's been successful in the real estate industry and now he knows better than anyone that I know 
how to teach others for that same success. Brand is what people say about you when you're not there. I've designed this program to provide you 100 times the value of your investment. It is content based and it has clear what to and how to's of real estate. Tom's content comes from his experiences in life. He delivers reality to the real estate world in his training. So we're going to cover how to generate more listing presentations, how to go into a listing presentation and be seen as a trusted advisor and be able to overcome other agents that charge lower fees. I'm also going to help you understand the value proposition of becoming a marketing-based agent, not just a transactional-based agent. And most importantly, I'm going to help you structure it, package it, and get it executed. So you can start listing and making more sales from the day you enroll in the program. I'm going to make sure that you brain tattoo these behaviors and they become part of your life permanently. I look forward to being your personal coach for the next nine weeks. Go to tompanos.com.au to get started. We're finishing up, guys. Here's uh, those of you, oh, let me tell you, it's $295. It's a nine week program. You have three months to do it. I'm on video. You do it on your iPhone, your iPad, your desktop, scripts, dialogues, ideal weeks, templates, your 2000 core area farm system, letters, the works. Because I've worked out that it's going to take nine weeks. It's not going to be a seminar. And I need you to habitualize the things. Those of you that want to do it, I open the doors on Tuesday um, again, formally. There's a sheet there. You fill it out. You'll give it to me, and I'll get you um, up and running in the next four or five days. As I said, you'll have three months to do it. Get some skin in the game. Yes, I make a dollar out of it. Let's not hide it. But at $295 that it is, that's like $4 a day to be personally coached. Gang, my final words as I finish off here today is this. I'll, and by the way, you fill it out. I'll be standing here for the next... 15 minutes over the lunch break. I finish off and say this, right? Um, let's drop the bullshit. Let's get, let go of old beliefs. Let's look at life with a new set of eyes. Let's not get our personal history get in the way of the destiny. And most importantly, who you are is not who you can be. Where you are is not as important as where you're heading. Thank you so much.